says we are live and I am really happy to be here today. Um, I feel like I'm like really rusty on the whole live stream. Haven't done it in a long time. I know that we put out like one back in January when we found Maureen Sherman. But uh, as far as just coming on here and giving you guys like a big broad overview of all the updates, haven't done it in a really long time. So anyway, like I said, thanks for being here today. A lot of things I want to cover today. Um, going to talk about a couple of cases that we've been working on, uh, meeting up with um, a few people of cases that we have solved in the past. And we'll just kind of take it from there. So again, like I said, thanks for being here. And I hope that everybody can hear me. So some people are saying hello. So I'm going to say yeah. All right, let's dive into it. Um, first of all, I want you guys to know, I am the happiest I've been in like my entire life. Just everything is coming together. Life, family, relationships. You learn who your friends are, who your enemies are, uh, who your haters are. So speaking of haters, definitely want to say thank you for them being here today as well, because nobody watches you harder than your than not, not your neighbors, your haters. So thanks for you guys being here as well. Um, with that being said, there's a case that uh, we were working on. Uh, we don't always record everything that we do, um, especially when it's so fresh, so new, and so sensitive to families. Um, so we're going to get into, in a few minutes, a case we were working on. We accidentally found somebody else. That makes number 32 that we'll tell you about in a few minutes. But first, I want to bring to light. Some of you know that we've been working on uh, Rachel Merchant Lee, who is a school teacher out of Glide, Oregon. Um, as of two days ago, she was recovered. Um, definitely a, a difficult case that we ended up working. Let me, in fact, let me bring her up on the screen here. So uh, this is uh, Rachel. Um, we ended up working with her husband. Now, I just want to say that our entire community is, is incredible. Uh, but one thing that I really want to, you know, point out in this is that, you know, life being precious, that you never know when it's going to be your last time that that morning she said to her husband, she said, you know, I love you. I love you, Howie, is what she ended up saying. And Howie is, you know, an incredible, let me bring this one up here. Um, you know, Howie is, is uh, her husband. And I'll bring it up over here. Like I said, I'm, I'm really rusty on this one. And in meeting Howie and working with Howie, this is the type of individual and young man that you really wish that your daughter would find in life. Love to death. You know, they did so many things together as a, as a, a couple. And, you know, Howie that morning or how that morning – after she left the house to go down the mountain to go to work, dressed in Dr. Seuss's thing one for Dr. Seuss Day as a kindergarten teacher. He was the very first one that half hour, 25 minutes later, ends up coming down the mountain, sees a set of tracks that goes off into the river and does not want to believe that it's his truck, that it's the size of his wheelbase, that he just knows that, you know, that that's, you know, probably his truck. Um, later on, the ODOT ends up going up they realize that, you know, it is her truck and they end up recovering the truck. However, for several weeks and months after that, her body has not been located and recovered. And this was definitely a difficult, let me jump over here. This was definitely a, a difficult search. Let's see if I can find the um, video on it. Um, you know, so, so this is where we ended up putting in that, and this is where the accident location was at. Um, but like I said, she was located a couple of days ago, and she was about seven, eight miles downstream from the accident location here that she ended up going in. Um, it's a tough one. Uh, but the good news is, you know, Howie and Rachel's parents, you know, they now have Rachel back home. They can, you know, the healing can now start. The healing can, can now begin. Um the next thing I want to jump into uh, before we get to the uh, RNL that we ended up finding, we're coming up on one year, or we just ended up last Tuesday, we came up on one year of Jacob Van Zant, And uh, being back down in the Lodi Stockton area, Joanna, his mother, reached out to us and wanted to get together with us. And, and I, she had a few questions as to the area where Jacob was located. You know, we had breakfast with her and she's, and, and I just want to say that she's doing incredibly well. Oh, hold on. Let me jump back over here. 
a lot of thoughts and emotions on my mind today. So I appreciate everybody just bearing with me here. And so with 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 uh, Joanna over here, had breakfast with her and her friend and met up with uh, Deanna, who is her other friend. And a lot of the coming back to the area that she had requested was to find out about the 28 vehicles that were in there. And, and we get a lot of comments from you guys, you know, did you guys pull the vehicles out? Has anybody pulled the vehicles out? Vehicles out. And we, and we sat back for a year and we waited to see what the local law enforcement is going to do. And so we went in and we scanned, we found 13 vehicles that are still in there down by the pump station. Um, however, they ended up doing an incredible job up there where Jacob was found uh, at the ferry crossing, where every one of the vehicles uh, had been pulled out of there. And, and in the process, they ended up finding one other gentleman who had been missing for a couple of years as well. So uh, all in all, the, the process has been started for the vehicle uh, removal. We did end up diving on a couple of other vehicles uh, that Joanna had a concern and interest on. And so uh, we, we were able to log where the, the rest of those vehicles were at. Uh, the next case that we're working on, that um, the reason why we were back in the area also looking for Duke Herringer, uh, incredible family that we met last year, uh, Steve, his brother, and uh, and his wife ended up housing us for a couple of days in the area. And we've really been focusing in on, you know, they have a family winery uh, out of, where Duke was out of Elk Grove. Oh, I got somebody texting me, making sure that everybody can hear me and nothing's going on. Okay because I'm not watching the comments. All right. Um, so, so Duke is a, a, is a case that we've worked uh, last year and we worked it again this year, which led to us finding somebody on accident, a, a case that we knew about, but a case that I wasn't real confident in taking on. But in the process of looking for Duke, we ended up finding Arnell. So I will kind of bring you into that story here. Uh, so Duke himself, he's out of Elk Grove, California. His home is over here off of Lambert Road. They have a family, family a winery, and his mother ends up passing away um, before Duke goes missing. Uh, Duke's last cell phone ping ended up down off of Steamboat Slough and Steamboat Slough Bridge. And you may have seen, we put out three other videos on this already, looking for Duke, where we ended up finding 18 vehicles in a five mile stretch of the steamboat slough and then we end up finding a couple of vehicles up here by the paintersville bridge heading up towards the family's winery now unfortunately we didn't have a success in finding him on that trip and those videos that you may have seen and so we came back to the area with a new focus of you know let's continue looking around these islands and all these sloughs because what you have in this area is you have um, you have sacramento river you have other offshoots of the sacramento river you have sutton slough you have Steamboat Slough, you've got all, all these different like weird sloughs and different names around here. So we ended up staying just south of here the night before at Hogback Landing. We put the boat in that night, went up, we found a truck here, and there's a ferry crossing here. Didn't find anything else that evening, but the next day we ended up with uh, heading back up to the north here with the idea of circling the rest of this island here. This is Sutton Island here. And, and if you look at all these, they all make up little islands out here. Well, what ended up happening is I'm going to bring up the information from the Charlie Project here and the reason why I would have never looked in this area. We have Arnell that we ended up finding. He was he says that he was last seen in Stockton, California, July 1st of 1994. Oh, sorry. I was on the wrong tab for you. Here we go. So th this is Arnell, Arnell uh, Navarro's. Um, so Navarro's was last seen in Stockton, California on July 1st, 1994. He left home to go to work uh, in the fields in the Delta Island Ranch in Twin Cities Road area of the Sacramento County. Now, Twin Cities uh, Road area that I'm told by the, by the uh, local law enforcement is that the Twin Cities is about seven miles from where we ended up, where we ended up uh, finding Arnell. Now, initially, he was driving, let me go back to this, uh, he was driving a 1988 Toyota Cressida with California license plates. Now, I'm going to pull the map back up here, and if we go from Stockton down here to where he was found, I'm going to do a line, um, 
that is a little over 28 miles away. And it's not necessarily the distance that kept us from looking for him, but all the information that we had would have been between Stockton and Twin Cities, and nothing would have taken us up here. So coming back to you, make sure I got the map on here. Again, thanks for everybody for uh, having patience with me as I go through all this. So we ended up scanning up here. We find a vehicle uh, that looks, is it's upside down. It appears to be the same size and shape as the Chevy Cruze that we're looking for, for, for um, Duke Herringer. And so I ended up diving on it, it's 31 feet deep. And in the process of coming back up, it ends up finding the license plate number 2HTD233. Ends up being Arnell uh, Navarez. Now, the thing is with this also is we ended up calling the uh, local sheriffs, end up coming in, incredible to work with. It was an all-female uh, crew that was there, uh, by crew, I mean officers, as well as Becky, the coroner as well, um, asked us to really help them out a lot. It was a Saturday. Uh, they knew that if they waited for the other dive team, that it could be, you know, four, five, six hours. And you guys have seen a lot of those recoveries where... You know, it takes you know it takes a long time to get kicked out of the area, but incredible work with us. Some of them knew who we were. Uh, tow truck driver showed up. He knew who we were, and we had already pre-rigged it so that way all the tow truck had to do was hook onto it and pull it out. In the process of doing so, it was a flawless recovery. Let me just pull up a picture here, uh, so you can see the you can see the uh, vehicle coming up out of the water. It was upside down. Our biggest concern on this is, is that the vehicle was underwater for 30 plus years. And we had another vehicle, you know, um, Carrie Mae Parker, that was underwater for 30 plus years. And the concern being on that, uh, the concern being on that is, is that, you know, that vehicle ended up pulling apart. Now, this vehicle, this Toyota was, you know, it was 31 feet underwater for 30 plus years, buried in silt. So the silt was buried up past the windows. And so we could never see inside while the vehicles went, was underwater. But once we had the vehicle on surface, we were able to identify that there were indeed remains inside and the recovery um, took place from there to where we ended up flipping the vehicle over, finished bringing up the bank. And we will have a video out on that probably within the next 30 days or so. Um, the next thing that I'd like to um, put out there for, for everybody is that um, while Rachel has been found, we have another case up here in Oregon, uh, another case that we're not, we've not recorded. And uh, the reason why we're not recording it is it's you know, somebody that has ended up in the water, it's not with a vehicle, and it's fresh, and it's new. And one of those things that you know, we've just learned over time you know, because we get the feedback from you guys and, and we see how, you know, the reaction is we don't record anything, you know, that's new anymore. Um, because, you know, we come into this as documentary filmmakers with using this platform to spread awareness of what our capabilities are, what we have available to do to help the next family. But that's only, and we try to keep it, only when the families are ready for us to step in to help them out. So, you know, these cases that are, uh, you know, a week or old, two weeks old, you know, a month old, three months old, those cases are not the cases that are ready for us. Uh, because really it's the, it's a trade-off, you know, it's a trade-off of the families saying, okay, we've given up. We've, you know, we've exhausted all resources. Nobody else is doing anything. And okay. The trade-off is that, yeah, you guys do document this and it is a very emotional time in our lives, but we do need the help. And, and I don't ever want it to feel like it's a us coming in and strong arming anything, but because you've seen me say, to each and every one of these families that we do work with, that we do have the cameras on, you know, first and foremost, we're here for you. And I want to make sure that you understand that if there's anything that's said on camera, cameras need to be off at a certain point, just please let us know. We're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to honor that because I'm not here to put the camera in the face. You know, some people refer to it as, you know, well, you guys get your money shots. Those are my haters. Again, thanks for being here. You guys are watching me harder than anybody else. But yeah, we do have money shots. Those are the shots that, you know, are the hooks for the videos that makes you guys actually want to watch what we do or somebody's never seen us before. But you guys are like the dedicated crew. You guys are here on a Sunday watching us. So, I mean, you guys would like watch almost everything that we do. So I appreciate you guys. But we do have to grow and we do have to have other people, you know, 
help spread awareness of what it is that we do as well. And so that's where the, the sharing of the videos come in. So I hope that everybody understands that, that we do really try to tread as lightly as we can in this one and honor the families. And you may have seen me do things in the past. You're like, well, Jared, this one time you ended up doing this, this, and this. 100% I did. Um, but like I said, I, I like to try to learn from all of it and, and uh, you know, do things differently. And, and that's what, like coming back to the, this story that I'm going to tell you. Uh, we ended up not recording that. But remember how I talked about how Howie, you know, and his love for Rachel and Rachel's love for him. This is another case that we're working where uh, Kelly is his wife. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this a moment and then we can go into a little bit more about the story. And I hope that you guys can hear it. Please come back. I'm, I'm missing him a lot. Just, I'm told this. I can't live without him. No, it's almost 11 days. And he didn't come back. So I just looking for help. A family is still hopeful. Grugender Singh Graywall, known as Gary, will come home. Gary is the owner of St. Paul Market. Police say he left work around 1030 in the morning on February 8th. He was last seen walking on the St. Paul Bridge on State Highway 219 about an hour later between Newburgh and St. Paul. His wife tells us this is unusual behavior. Usually he always go for, you know, shopping from 11 to 1. This is like a regular time to go somewhere. When he didn't return, she knew something was wrong. That's when she went looking for Gary. His car was later found on the south side of the bridge. His wife says he was well known in the community and doesn't know how something like this could happen. From the last four years, we are like kind of a part of this community and everybody like us, I think. And he was he was friend to everybody. He would just if he was going outside, everybody saying hello to him, you know, he was, he, he knew everybody's name. Missing persons flyers were put up around town. The St. Paul community still in shock. Neighbors tell us who Gary is as a person and what his family means to everyone. So, you know, Gary is a, you know, comes from a small town, St. Paul. I mean, I, I think they only have a couple hundred residents there, you know, so it's not just the community this morning, but you know, his, his wife, incredible some people you just meet and you're like you know what love of your, you know love of their lives and that's what kelly has for gary you know and, and unfortunately you know gary ended up driving to the bridge left his wallet left his phone in the middle of the newburgh bridge which is just down river for where we found uh, ralph brown at the rogers landing boat ramp and, and so i'm bringing awareness to this because you know a couple of things one is we ended up not recording that we've been over there a couple of times searching the river with sonar looking at the river banks this river is wider and deeper and longer that goes into Portland than the than the uh, river that Rachel was found. And so we have to think about, you know, Rachel was found seven miles downstream. And if you don't find somebody within the first couple hundred yards, I mean, they could be five miles, 10 miles, 15, 30 miles down river. And so I want to bring awareness to this to keep it in the news because it's the, the, the news is no longer covering it. Law enforcement is no longer looking. And so if you happen to be anywhere up in portland area newburgh area um or whatever the little communities are up there you know if you're on the river keep an eye out looking for gary help spread awareness and, you know let i spoke with uh, kelly this morning you know gary's not yet been found now the weird thing is two other bodies have been found in the willamette river this past week so unfortunately neither one of those were gary the next thing i'd like to jump into um, so a couple of cases that we're working uh, that I want to bring to uh, everybody's attention as well. Uh, we have a doctor, Graham Case is his name, and uh, his father reached out to me, his sister reached out to me, and a few others reached out to me. And, and really a, oh, I'm sorry, you can't see this, sorry. Let me bring it up. Uh, Graham Case. Uh, this is a case that we're working where you know he's he's a doctor out of Medford, Oregon, same place that Brandon Purdue is out of. The gentleman where you know look in the glove box um, was the story on that one. So now we've gone from looking for one person in the area to looking two for two people in the area. Now the thing with Graham is, you know, mental health affects. You know, it, it's not race specific. It's not 
uh, income specific. It's, you know, it's one of these things that just ends up happening to, you know, to families, unfortunately, to, to individuals and families. And the thing is, is two years earlier, his wife ends up passing away from cancer. She was his life. She was his all, did everything for him. And they have three kids. Now, unfortunately, you know, he made a few comments that, you know, like, like everybody's lives would just be better without me. You know, attempts have been made before. And this leaves us with the where do we go looking for um, for Gary? And I'm sorry, not Gary. We're now we're talking about Graham. You know, where, where do we go looking for Graham that we have? He's from the Medford area. This is where, the, you know, where he was last seen. But he grew up over in Klamath Falls. And a lot of these lakes up here are the same lakes that we ended up looking for Brandon. And so we're re-looking not just for Brandon, but also Graham this time. And everything in red is what we've already done. We we ended up doing three days on this one so far, where we started in Medford. We ended up back over at Lost Creek Lake. We then uh, finished that search. It's where, uh, and you'll see it in an upcoming episode, where the pass was completely covered. And I put a video up of it uh, where the snow was higher up than the RV. And then heading down to California last week, we ended up checking a few more locations up in the mountains, a few more down by Klamath Falls. And then when we came back up, we ended up up in the mountains again. So we're really trying to cover as much as we can, but we also want to put the message out, you know, that Graham case is missing and the vehicle that he's driving is a GL 450 um, license plate number 26068. So if by chance, you see that vehicle anywhere that happens to be up in the mountains. He's been missing for coming up on a year. He went missing June 22nd of 2023. So again, just want to make sure everybody is aware of that case. The I want to talk about Sunshine State Sonar in just a few moments, the uh, incredible work that they're doing over there. But before I do, I want to jump into a few things that Again, it's the haters. The, the haters really help define and help me for, you know, how we can better present um, our message to people. And but then there's some ways that, you know, I just like there's there's just, just like no way around it. And so one of the things that I want to you know point out is, you know, we we sell the window breakers. Most of you guys know that we sell window breakers. It's a way of bringing breaking out of your vehicle. Does it work on all windows? Absolutely not. It works on tempered glass. And so. Uh, you know, to look to think about it, most windshields are, I'm sorry, all windshields are going to be laminate glass. Uh, some people say, well, all the new, all the new cars have laminate glass. It's simply not true. Your vehicle might, uh, my wife's vehicle does not, it's a newer vehicle and, it's, and it has tempered glass. And so you can go out and you can look on the window and it says, you know, tempered glass, but you know, do we use death and tragedy to help promote safety? 100%. And we always will, we have, and it's not going to stop because, you know, one thing that, that we found is there's been several people that we've found that if they would have had a window breaker, they'd be here today, but then you can just, you can go Google this yourself. Here's, here's the thing, you know, you can go take a look at the, you know, the five teens that, you know, four of them that worked at the same steakhouse ended up in a pond where do I believe that, you know, they could have gotten out? Absolutely. I believe it. Um, you know, you end up with a, um, a you know, police release uh, video of three teenage girls that end up drowning, you know, in a police chase. They end up in the pond and they couldn't get out. So do I believe that they could have gotten out? Yeah. Do I think that everybody can? No, I, it's, it's irresponsible of me to say, hey, if you have a window breaker, 100 percent, if you end up in the water, you will save your life no matter what. Not true. You know, some of you will. Some of you might. You know, there's other ones where, you know, Naples uh, woman, in fact, there's been two people in Florida recently that ended up in the water and they were unable. As a 52 year old Naples woman was driving a Tesla east on Indies Avenue when the driver came up to a left curve in the road, the left side tires of her car hit the curb. They say the car flew over the shrubs on the shoulder of the road, went airborne and landed in the canal. FHP says the Tesla was fully submerged and the woman got stuck inside. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Reporting in. You know, and so, and so a case like that one, I'm going to tell you 100%, a window breaker would not have helped her. And, and the reason for it is 
Teslas have, you know, extreme safety glass. You're not going to be able to break a window with a um, window breaker, you know. But there are the, there are other cases that are now, as an example, are now that we just ended up uh, finding. Let me pull this back up. You know, so so you have Arnell. Uh, so you have Arnell here, who unfortunately, back in 1994, there were no window breakers. And what I believe with him, based on where he was at, where we're dealing with a single lane road that's barely big enough for the RV, you're thinking you have to remember days before GPS, days where you have MapQuest that you've printed out, uh, you know, places you're going to. I believe that he ended up overshooting uh, Twin Cities, where he's supposed to go to work. He ends up on this Sutton Island Road, ends up at the dead end, goes to turn around, and off into the water. Do I believe that he could have survived if he had a window breaker? 100%. Yes, I do. And there's others, you know, there's, there's others that I do believe the same as well. Um, with that over, let me uh, jump into the last thing I would like to talk about. There are other teams out there that are, that are doing incredible work. And I just wanted to bring, if you've not heard of Sunshine State, um, to date, uh, to the, in the last 12 months, AWP has now solved five cases. Uh, two of them were with Sunshine State Sonar, and they actually solved more cases last year and in the last 12 months than AWP. So, you know, I give credit to them, happy with what they've done in order to bring families home to or give answers to families that were looking all those years. You know, because can you imagine for a moment, you know, before AWP, how many people did you hear about in water and being recovered? And how many families have now been received answers because we did start documenting this because we put this out there on the internet because AWP helped other dive teams by giving them magnets, by giving them boats, by doing, um, you know, get togethers where we paid them to find X number of vehicles and, and cars to help train them in sonar. And so while AWP has now recovered and found 32 people, the butterfly effect in life is incredible and it's real. And, you know, while we don't take credit for, you know, 60, 70 fines, I only, we only take credit for what AWP has done. Think about the movement because you guys have been here. You guys have helped spread awareness about the message about finding people and lost loved ones and letting us know about the families that need help. So again, I want to say thank you to all of you for everything you've done. Sunshine State Sonar, I just want to go through some of this stuff. You know, they've solved, I think, 9, 10, 11 cases now. They found hundreds of vehicles. We were with them. I'll scroll through here a little bit. Make sure that you guys can see that, yeah. Um, you know, they're still looking for um, Stephen McCraw. They have, they have a lot of cases that they're working on. But they end up solving uh, Robert Helfrey last year. Uh, we were with him in Florida with Kareem Tisdell. We're with them um, with the, let me scroll some more. I know they did carry more that they ended up finding. Um, still, he's still, they're, they're still looking for this one. Anyway, they have an incredible team. And, you know, speak, speaking of teams, as we go through this, you know, a lot of times there's like, well, I didn't know Jared was still doing this or who's on the team. And, oh, I heard teams left. Well, you know, at the end of the day, we have a lot of teams and a lot of volunteers and a lot of people that come and go, whether it's editors or filmers or other searchers. And at the end of the day, we just want to say thank you for those that are with us. You know, never regret what chapter you're in with somebody. It may not work it out in the end. They might be a part of the next chapter. They might not be, you know, and, and that's okay. That's life. But like I said at the beginning of this, life is incredible, extremely happy. And I want to say thank you to all of you for being here with me and allowing me to do what it is that, that I do, what, what it is I love. And I have to treat this as a business and I have to you know, make sure that we have the window breaker sales and other merchandise sales and that we have the um, monetization on YouTube and Facebook. And that, you know, there's certain things that we say and certain things we don't say, such as we don't say, you know, the S word. But, you know, but we will say, you know, self-harm, you, know, uh, you know, things like that. Um. Oh, that's my time today.
you know, so I just want to say, you know, thank you. There's so much more to come in 2024 and 25. And, you know, my wife asked me, she, you know, hey, would you still be doing this even if you weren't, were not on YouTube? And, you know, clearly we are. We're doing it behind the scenes as well. And, you know, we're happy for the people that are, you know, taking the information that we that, that, that we provided in some of these videos and they follow through on it, such as there's a I don't know the name of his company, but his name is James Hinkle. We have a couple of videos that are still coming up for Donnie Irwin that we were looking for out of Camdenton, Missouri. But he took the information as where we had been and what we had done, and he moved forward with that, and he ended up solving the case. So there's a lot of people that move forward solving cases, you know, because they once saw AWP. Sunshine State Sonar, great example. You know, he said he started watching us. He spent a year studying the, the sonar, another year trying to figure out how to find, how to find cars. And once he did... Look at how many cars and how many families he's now found and the answers that he's helped provide. So, um, again, could not be doing it without each and every one of you. We appreciate you guys being a part of it with all of us, you know, whichever team we're with at the time. Sometimes it's Bill if we're on the East Coast and sometimes it's, you know, Johnny and Matt on the West Coast. And sometimes you'll see my brother step in. And so thank you. On that note, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my Sunday. You guys do the same. You know, what's your purpose? You know, we all have to find our own purpose in life, and this is mine. I'm enjoying it. Thank you.